At long last, we have another episode of Let's Play Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Uh, sorry for the long delay here. Um, we're going to continue exploring uh, with the double jump, finding new areas. Anyways, found a teleporter here. Sorry about the delay for the space between videos. This week has been pretty hectic at work. Um, getting very busy, which is surprising because usually at this time of year, a lot of businesses are pretty slow, so I guess that's a good thing with the economy being all sucky. Um, that sword over there we're not going to be able to get until we get something that can allow us to fly, so we'll have to come back to that much later in the game. And then over on this side here we've got an item down below that we can get. There we go, a Cestus. And if I equip that it's a fist attachment used for punching. So basically, it's kind of like brass knuckles. But considering that it has no range whatsoever, I'm not going to use it. Not worth taking damage for. And I think we'll move over to the next area now. Okay. We're back here where we uh, originally farmed the Skull Archer soul from. Uh, let's continue up using the double jump and the flying armor soul. Now we can get up to these landings here we couldn't reach earlier. Uh, I'll come back here in a minute actually. There's an item over here we need to get. There we go. And that would be the lance, which is our first spear type weapon. Notice that it's got like a downwards jab almost, which is kind of weird. And it's, although it's stronger than the whip sword, I just like the whip sword's range in this whole area of the castle, so I'm going to stick with that. And continuing on, we've got a new enemy here, which is the Siren. And hopefully I can get her soul on the way up this part of the tower, otherwise I will get that off screen. Nice big red boot back there. Man, oh man, man, oh man. There we go. Well, I guess I'm going to have to get that soul off screen. Um, so instead of going over to this new area, I think I'll stop here and we'll be right back with that soul. Okay, I've got the siren soul now, which allows us to... Uh, create a song that casts a spell, or so it says. Basically, it's just a projectile with damage, like most other bullet souls. I'll show you here quickly down on one of these sirens. It's actually pretty strong, though, but it's kind of slow moving and easy to dodge, so I don't recommend using it. But it does one hit the sirens, which isn't bad. I think I'll switch back to my axe armor, though. And we will move on to the next new area over here to the left, which is... The Dance Hall! And we get to meet our final character in this... the drama that takes place in this castle. Strange. I sense a dark power within you. Who are you? It's rude to ask such questions before introducing yourself. Yes, you're right. I can't give you my name, but people call me Jay. People call you Jay? Why hide your real name? Are you a criminal? No, I have amnesia. I'm told that I was in an accident in 1999. When I woke up in the hospital, I had forgotten my name and my past. Oh, I see. Well, my name's Soma. Your dark power. Were you born with it? I don't really know. I first noticed it when I entered this castle. I see. I guess I was mistaken. Mr. J, why have you come to this castle? Call me J. I am filled with fear when I hear the name Dracula. I came here because of the prophecy. I also thought my memory might return. In fact, since my arrival, I have felt like my memory is returning. And your accident occurred in 1999. Maybe Dracula was involved? 
I fear you are correct, especially since I have magical powers. Jay, are you an exorcist? Well, you might say that, but I work for no one but myself. I must be going now. I'm sure we'll meet again. Yeah, see ya. So now we've met the mysterious Mr. J. Wonder what he's up to. In the meantime, there's a new soul we can get right where we met him, which is the waiter skeleton. And I will get that off screen and we'll be right back with that. Alright, I've got the waiter skeleton soul, which allows us to sling hot curry at foes. Basically, it's kind of like the uh, doll soul that we got a little while ago. It does damage, but it also lures enemies toward it, and it's got a little better range. And since it does damage whereas the doll soul doesn't, I highly recommend using that rather than the doll soul. Uh, notice you can kind of get up to this upper landing right now, but I'm going to stay on the bottom and finish up that area first. Got more dancing ghosts. Or ghost dancers, rather. You can go off to the left here, and you can't quite reach that sword yet, so we'll head down. Now in this hallway, we meet a familiar enemy, which is Creaking Skull, previous boss. I will get his soul off screen and be back with that. Okay, I've got the Creaking Skull soul, which allows support of a battle from behind. So basically, it creates an arm in whatever direction you're facing when you summon it, and that arm will attack whenever you do. And it does major damage, it's pretty strong. Notice if I face that way, it'll turn that way. So it's pretty useful. I'll show you it up here. Hundred and fourteen, not bad. Anyway, I'm gonna get this new enemy soul and I'll be back with that. Okay, I've got the wood golem soul, which allows MP recovery rate to increase. And since I used up almost all my MP right now, I'll equip that until it fills up. You notice it kind of up in the corner, incrementally growing a little faster than it was at least. Better Better that than nothing, I guess. You could also f uh, farm those killer dolls for souls if you need them still, if you decided not to get them in that earlier room. This area is pretty good for them. And here we have another Minotaur. More killer dolls and zombie officers. Oh, and a level. I wonder what level I am, actually. I should check that. 24. Not bad. If you're around level 15 or so in this place, it's not bad. I'm way over leveled because of all the, the soul and equipment farming that I've been doing. Now we've got a $500 bag here. I'll meet you back at the intersection. Okay, we're back here at the intersection. I'll show you on the mini-map here basically where we dropped down from the ballroom earlier. And continuing on, we've got another bikini-clad evil butcher. Oh, back here. You can't quite reach that either, so we'll have to come back for that potion over there. Oh. <laughs> nice bikini, Mr. Evil Butcher. Nice and pink. <laughs> or purple. They kind of look a little... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. I like the green ones more. They're kind of ogre-ish rather than... These pink ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, over to the right here we've got a save point. And a boss battle on the left. So let's go take care of the boss before we run out of time here. Oh, got an evil butcher soul. Not bad. And the boss here is the Big Golem, which will also become a regular enemy later in the game. I believe this is actually the last one of these type of bosses that's actually an enemy, as opposed to a boss. The goal is to try to hit his head. 
and of course dodges hands, which I didn't do very well there. Um, the axe is pretty useful since it gets three hits on him usually if you throw it well enough. And the whip sword's especially useful due to its range, as I said it would be earlier. Just take your time and you shouldn't have any problem with him. He should be dead soon. Um, once he dies, I think... Nope, there we go. I think that'll wrap up this video and I'll show you what's over on the next room in the next video. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you soon.